Okay, well, welcome to the Bridge of the Cavalier, uh, and this is uh, this episode, this is a segment of this. We're just going to go over um, a little bit about the boat and how we drive the boat and all the controls and feet and some of the features of, of this part of the boat. So basically, this is a uh, Silverton uh, 43 motor yacht with uh, twin diesel engines of 450 horsepower apiece, and we do have a bow thruster. Um, so basically, what uh, our controls are, obviously, we have a steering wheel here. And we have these are our engine controls. So this is starboard, and this is the port. And the way they're laid out is they're also the shifters. So when you go, if you go up, you're going into forward, and then the further you go up, the more it throttles it up. And, and if you go down, you're going in reverse, and again, more throttle in reverse. Now you can operate these things independently, or you can operate them together. And in low speed maneuvering, you usually leave them, usually leave the, the what you call the, the rudder the steering wheel centered and then you use your engines to move, maneuver the boat because you can spin this boat around in its own diameter. You can just spin it around all day long with these two engines. Put one in forward, one in reverse, and I think it'll just turn it, turn on a dime. Um, so that's how you, that's how you uh, like in and getting in slips and around marinas and anything low speed, you're, you're, you don't even touch the wheel. You're using, you're using your throttles to steer. Uh, then when you, when you get going, you, uh, you, you do what you call sync them up and then you can, you can run both the engines off of one off the one control here and it'll keep them synchronized, it'll keep them at the same RPM. So that's how the engines work and then uh, pretty much, uh, again I said we have a bow thruster, that really helps so it can, it can move the bow either either uh, either to port or, or to port or to starboard, however you want and uh, that's real help, helpful whenever we're doing uh, docking and stuff like that. I try not to rely on it as much as, uh, as I have to because it's only limited in what it can do and you can't use it continuously, you gotta use it very sparingly. So uh, that's that's how we basically get the uh, uh, boat going forward, and we'll go over some of the other controls we have here. Um, we have these two up here; they're not on right now, but they're the engine. Uh, they're 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 the, the digital uh, engine controllers. They report everything going on about the engine, what what the temperatures are, what the fuel burn rate is, RPM, everything to do with the engines come up on those two displays. Um, then over here. Uh, well, let's some of the minor ones first. We have our VHF radio, very important, and you can see, if you can see that, it's on channel 16 right now. You're required, actually, to, to always be monitoring channel 16. That's the safety channel. The Coast Guard um, monitors that channel, so if you ever have any emergency, whatever, you call out on channel 16. And it's also the hailing channel. You can call people on 16 and then switch to another channel to talk. So we got that. Um, we also have our, our uh, windlass controls up here. This can raise and lower the anchor from right here. There's also controls uh, up there that you can raise and lower the anchor from. Um, then over here, what this is, is this is our autopilot. Very important, uh, useful piece of uh, equipment here. So this, this is the brains for it, and over here I have turned on the uh, power. So it's a hydraulic steering, and uh, this is what controls it. Okay, and then uh, we do have our ship's compass right here. We don't use it a lot. We use it sometimes when we're setting anchor alarms and stuff like that to, as a reference because uh, this everything else will tell us what direction we're going. In fact, that's telling us we're going 267 degrees there, and if you look at that, you're right about 267 degrees. Okay, so we've talked about most of the other controls. Uh, there's some other minor things here, uh, but uh, the main ones that you care about are now our chart plotter, and this is our tablet, which is our, our we'll talk about in a minute, but it's also how we check how we're navigating. Um, so basically, the way the, the chart plotter works is it, it brings everything everything in uh, everything gets controlled through here. We have radar that this will control. Uh, we have sonar that this will control, and you can we, you know I'm not going to go through all those displays, but it's it's everything is brought into one thing for this for the chart plotter here. Uh, but this is also how we we uh, we drive the boat a lot. So basically, what you're looking at here is there's our boat right in the middle, and we're sitting right now we're sitting in Kings Bay in Crystal River. And as you see Kings Bay right there. So uh, that's showing where the boat is. And what you're seeing about this what the, this little uh, line, that's actually what they call the magenta line. Um, I've pre-programmed in a route. Uh, I'd usually do it the night before. Um, I could sit up here and do it. I can uh, link up my uh, pad to it and do it through that. Or there's other uh, programs, Navionics and stuff like that. You can plot routes in and then load them up to the chart plotter. But once you have it plotted in, I'm going to zoom out now. And this, I have a plot right now that's going to take us all the way down to Tarpon Springs. So if you look at it here, it's taking us out Crystal River. I'm not going to go in too far, but it's taking us out Crystal River and then out into the Gulf of Mexico. And then from the Gulf of Mexico, it's taking us down to Tarpon Springs. 
and it takes us down to Tarpon Springs and I have all these turns programmed and this is all I have all these in to, to take care to keep us in deep water basically and then as you get down to Tarpon Springs we can zoom in again and it takes us up the and and, and Anclote River up to Tarpon Springs so uh, basically what this what this will do is we, we can we can uh, put it in what's called route follow mode and the boat will steer itself through the autopilot it'll keep it on that course now um, that's one way we steer we probably we probably use that about oh I'd say 75 percent of the time um, we also have we can manually steer it you just take the autopilot off and you can manually steer it and uh, we can also go by what's called heading hold to where if the boat's pointing in one direction and I engage heading hold it'll just keep it going in that direction so that's really really helpful too because um, when I plot this, this is not absolute when I make a route like that. That's, uh, if I do it really well, we can stay on it most of the time, but there's other times there's there's boats coming at you, there's obstructions, people in the water doing different things. You can't just run by that route. You have to often take it off off the auto route and either hand steer or, or go ahead and hold. So that's how we steer the boat generally. Um, what we also have here, again, we talked about our tablet here, and this is really important that it's, a, it's another way of, an independent way of looking at everything. So we don't have a route plugged into this, but we keep track of where we are. So this has got our boat again right here. Our boat's here, and it's, and it's when, we, when we go out, we can zoom in on this, and then we can keep track of where we are and what the depths are. So it shows us. It shows you where you're at in the channel, and you can zoom in as far as you want. And this is really helpful because we've actually found that this is actually slightly more accurate than our than our uh, Garmin chart plotter and keeping us in deep water. So we basically are looking at both of them all the time. And when it ever gets even um, a little bit uh, tricky or it's an area that's really narrow, both of us are up here, and we're both looking at in, you know looking at the different charts and also use it look as importantly we're looking out at our at our you know out the, the windshield here and basically there's there's what's called atons aids to navigation that are that are uh, markers that we are following that mark channels and and whenever you're in close here you're always follow you know you're always looking at those they show up on your charts on both charts so basically you want everything to agree you want it to agree with what you're looking at, to agree with the aqua maps to display on that, and on our chart plotter. So if everything, everything agrees, and also on here we have depth. We have our we're, uh, we're, we look at our depth. If you look at here, it's telling us we're sitting only in 0.2 feet of water right now. Um, that's actually uh, or 0.5 now. So it's it's really close, but that's that's depth under keel, and we actually have about another foot clearance above that. So we're actually the lowest part of the boat is sitting in about you know one and a half feet of water right now because we're at low tide so um, that's okay that's getting a little skinny it's it is in here but um, so basically everything it needs to add up and, and there's depth information on all these charts so we're looking at that we're looking at our depth and that's how we basically drive the boat um, and we you know we're not going to go into everything about the what, how the aids to navigation work and stuff like that if you're really interested if you're in, there's plenty of stuff in the internet you can look at uh, it'll tell you about that so that's kind of it for now. So anyway, hope that hope that was uh, interesting and uh, for people. And if it's not, uh, well, you can skip it. <laughs> Thank you.